I hope you're having a lovely day today. Today's video is going to be my 2022 bullet journal setup video. This is most definitely the most exciting video for me to film every year. I am so, so excited. So as I said in last week's video, the bullet journal I'm going to be using for next year is this really gorgeous gold A5 time for tea dot grid notebook with 192 pages. For the past few years, I've been using the 160 pages notebooks from Archer and Olive, but this year I really wanted to try one of their 192 pages since you guys know I usually run out of space. <laughs> It is absolutely gorgeous, as are all the Archer and Olive notebooks. This one in particular came with this really helpful sort of measuring guide for people who aren't very into using grid spacing guides. So before we get into actually starting the bullet journal, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsors, Ana Luisa. Today's video is brought to you by Ana Luisa. They have supported the channel numerous times before, and I'm so happy that they're back again to sponsor another video. Ana Luisa is a sustainable, high quality, and affordable jewelry brand. They create gorgeous pieces at fair prices starting at $39 with exceptional quality and a wonderful sustainability mission. Ana Luisa offsets 100% of their carbon emissions starting with the sourcing of their raw materials all the way through to the disposal of their pieces. They ensure the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste by releasing pieces in limited batches. This time around, I wanted to show you guys this gorgeous layered temple green necklace that immediately caught my eye when browsing their website, as well as these very typical Piper style earrings. They're so me. These Ashi star hoop earrings and these Anna Lee gold dagger earrings. These are so cute. I'm especially in love with the cute dagger one. Look how adorable it looks. Finally, I got this absolutely gorgeous travel jewelry case in this beautiful velvety green and it is honestly so beautiful and I can't wait to like actually put all of my Ana Luisa jewelry inside my Ana Luisa jewelry case. It is so compact and beautiful but it has just enough little compartments for anything you may need for going abroad. The quality of these pieces are as always noticeable as they're all crafted with care and made to be long lasting. They also have a 365 day warranty. If you'd like to get your own gorgeous pieces from Ana Luisa, they are currently running the biggest sale of the year. 10% off and last chance items with up to 60% off. So make sure to check out the link in the description and on screen right now. I cannot recommend Ana Luisa enough and I'm sure you guys will find some pieces to obsess over on their website like I did. Thank you again to Ana Luisa for supporting the channel and sponsoring yet another video. So starting off, obviously the first thing I have to do is write my name in the first page where they have a little template that says this book belongs to, etc. And this is always the most fun, exciting part because it just feels so nice to start fresh, start a new notebook, and it's just so, so exciting. If you guys watched last year's bullet journal setup, aka this year's bullet journal setup, I should say, for 2021, you'll remember that I used very monochromatic tones, very black and white and grey for pretty much all of my setup spreads, and as much as I loved them, I thought I would do something a bit more colourful for this year, just to kind of keep things a little bit different and just keeping me on my toes, I guess. I'm still gonna do some spreads that are very, you know, black and white and using a lot of sparkles, as you guys know. I love using sparkles and drawing sparkles everywhere. So I'm definitely gonna be using a lot of those elements in a lot of the spreads today. First off, we can't go without doing a keys page and doing a little key log. And this is basically where I will write down which symbol means what in my bullet journal. And even though I know off by heart what all of them mean, it's just nice to have a little key. It just makes things feel a little bit more professional. And I don't know, if someone else needs to see my bullet journal for some reason, they'll understand what the keys mean, I guess. But yeah, I'm just very used to doing, you know, keys and index pages and stuff like that from school. So I guess it's just a habit that I gained from that. Yeah, I just decorated the rest of the page with, with these kind of like sparkly lines going everywhere. They kind of just remind me a lot of the fairy dust, dust trails from Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. I don't know, it, it, I just really enjoy. I've been doing these a lot, both in my drawings and in my bullet journal spreads recently, so. And then I went in and actually drew out all of my keys and what each symbol means. 
so I don't really usually change these every year uh, they're kind of the same every time so I have my task symbol my task completed one events a, a task that's been moved a travel symbol a priority symbol and a birthday symbol um, yeah I'll normally just use these on a regular basis and if I do ever uh, use something new I'll just add it to the key list over there So on the second page over here, you guys know I usually like doing a little quote page or just something pretty to kind of start off the bullet journal. Since it is just one page, I just wanted to, you know, make it look pretty and kind of start off the bullet journal right. And I decided to go with this little quote that says, take it day by day which is just something that I kind of live by, you know? Sometimes when things get rough, it's easy to just kind of get caught up in getting anxiety for the future and things that haven't even happened yet. And my little mantra is always to just, you know, take it day by day. So yeah, I just uh, went with this little quote, take it day by day. I just think it's gonna be a nice little reminder every time I open up my bullet journal for this year, since I, I'm, I've got a lot of projects that I'm working on this year and I, I uh, hopefully I won't get too overwhelmed. <laughs> and I then also decided to decorate this page with a kind of a running theme that I've uh, chosen to use for this year's bullet journal, which is these kind of random squiggly lines. I've been doing these sort of patterns in my drawings a lot recently and I, I thought I'd, you know, migrate this into my actual bullet journal as well. I have kept in with this theme using more of a, a lilac color for my January spreads and a bunch of my other spreads you'll see in a bit, but for this first page I wanted to keep it a little bit different, so I decided to go with like this baby pink because I already used purple and lilac in the quote. And I thought it would be a nice way to marry the colors. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm just using my Tumble Dual Brush Pen in baby pink. And I just filled in all of these little squigglies. And yeah. If you guys are interested in knowing what materials I used in today's video, all the links will be down there in the description box so you can see all the stuff that I used. And with that quote page finished, I decided to go in and do my grid spacing guide page. Uh, I did this for the first time last year and it was honestly so incredibly helpful. I first learned about it on Amanda H. Lee's channel. It's uh, a very helpful a little page to have in the beginning of your bullet journal. Although Archer and Olive did put in a little grid spacing guide page in their notebooks, if you are not using an Archer and Olive notebook, then this might come in handy. It's basically just a little guide on how you can divide up pages in your notebook into different segments, you know, like thirds, quarters, and where the middle of each page is, so that you can just cut back and reference it any time you may need it. I used this page a lot last year, so I obviously had to put it in again. And I did a reference for thirds, quarters, and then bigger thirds and bigger quarters, depending on if I want there to be a border around my page or not. And I also include the number of squares that it takes to make up any of these spaces. And then I just wrote down there the title of this page with my Archer and Olive Acrylograph pens. I used some of my lilac and purple colors to do most of these titles and pages. And yeah, I think they all just kind of went really well together. <laughs> And of course, had to add some sparkles. 
okay. <laughs> I just, I am unable to move on without adding sparkles to everything. <laughs> And with my grid spacing guide page done, I went over to the next page, which is going to be my 2022 goals. I usually call them resolutions, but I decided to kind of put together my New Year's resolutions and my sort of goals list together and just make them my 2022 goals. And I have some of this craft paper from an Archer and Olive inserts notebook and I'm going to just put a little scrap of that paper over at the top there to make a little background for my title. Then I drew out this little rectangle which is where I'm going to be writing in my goals for this year and of course just wrote the title up there at the top and then I decorated the background of the page with some of those lilac little squiggles and swirlies that I was talking about earlier. I will have to figure out a better name for them. Little waves? Squiggly waves? And again, I just use a tumble dual brush pen in this sort of pale purple to do all of these squigglies. And then I went in with a Arteza fine liner in purple to add a cute little border to all the squiggles because I just think it looked better with a sort of a dark border on them and it just made them stand out a little bit more. And I finished off the page, of course, with some backdrops to the title. I used my acrylograph pen in white to add a little bit of a white drop shadow. <laughs> And finally, I topped off the page with just some more sparkles here and there, just to fill in the gaps. Then it was time for my year at a glance double spread. And this is where I'm just gonna basically draw out the entire year's calendar. And this is where I'll write any future events that I have going on this year that I know are happening. And yeah, it's just a nice way to look at the entire year in its entirety. I did a double spread, so I did six months per page so that I could fit 12 months in a double spread. And last year I did a sort of a, like a little rainbow theme for this double spread and I decided to keep that color scheme for this year as well just because I thought it looked really really adorable with all the months having a different sort of color to them and then I use that month's color to highlight any events or holidays or anything and I think it was just a really nice way of color coding this gigantic spread. <laughs> So I used my Crayola Super Tips in basically all the colors that I have really and went in for each month and added a little stripe of the color and that's where I'm going to be writing my days of the week and that's also going to be the way that I identify each color for each month. I think the rainbow theme also just really complements the more colorful vibe that I'm going for this year, so I just think it all looks very, very pretty. And then I filled out all of the days of the month of every year, and so as to not bore you of me just writing numbers for eternity, I just <laughs> did it off camera. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Don't forget to have an actual calendar of next year open in front of you because uh, over the past few years I've been foolish enough not to do that and then I have errors <laughs> that would just spread over the next few months and it would just be a mess so make sure to get it right in the monthly spread. So yeah and then I to match the themes I went in with my top dual brush pen in lilac to add in all the squiggly waves <laughs> over at the top and the bottom. And then of course I went in with my Arteza fine liner to outline them.
And once that was done, I was obviously gonna add more sparkles. <laughs> and I used the same Arteza pen that I used for the outlines and did some cute little sparkles here and there in places where I knew it wasn't gonna take up too much space for me writing down my events and stuff. And it was then time to go into my things to check out this year. Again, I did a double spread for this because I wanted to separate it into categories as I usually do. So I've got movies, books, podcasts, shows, and music to check out. Here I'm just using my Zebra Mild Liner in this sort of lilac -y color to draw out the background for my titles. And then I go in with my Archer and Olive Acrylograph to do a little outline. I kind of wanted to draw them out like these little buttons that look quite cute. And of course, adding a little cross hatched backdrop that I'm kind of using a lot in a lot of my spreads this year as well. I feel like I'm using a lot of different themes, but you know, I like to have a bunch of different themes and then, you know, pick and choose which ones I'm going to use for every spread, but always having them sort of matching in the end. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I wrote in the titles inside each little circle and then drew out the box where I'm going to be writing in all the things I'm going to be checking out this year. And for these boxes, I'm just using this really deep purple Archer and Olive Acrylograph pen. I still wanted to use a very dark color, but I still wanted to keep in with the purple color family. So that's what I'm using. Of course, I couldn't finish off this spread without adding a little bit of sparkles here and there. I know it looks quite empty at the moment because I haven't filled any of these boxes in, but trust me, it'll look really, really lovely and well used once I fill in all of the stuff that I'm gonna check out this year. So yeah, next double spread is my YouTube planner. And again, this one's gonna look a little bit empty by the time that I finish it because I obviously don't wanna spoil any of the stuff that I'm gonna be doing this year. So I just did a little page separation down the middle over there on the left so that I can have two columns for any video ideas. And I just, just did this like little branch separator. I'm not too sure. This is kind of harkening back to the theme that I did last year for most of my setup spreads. If you didn't watch that video, um, it definitely have a, a watch because I, I do a lot of these cool little branch outlines and dividers and stuff like that that I, I kind of miss doing. So a little homage to the 2021 bullet journal setups. And then of course, I just kind of decorated the entire page with these purple squiggly waves. So I'm going in with my Arteza fine liner to just define the shapes and then coloring in the shapes with my Tombow Duo brush pen. Of course, I also drew out the title over there at the top, added some little gold stars with a gold pen because I was feeling fancy. And then I've got these two boxes over here on the right hand side. One is for voiceovers and one is for series that I have currently running on the channel. I just drew those in with my black pen, gave them a little drop shadow of course, and honestly that was pretty much it for this spread. Of course I added some more sparkles here and there, added a little stripe of color of gray behind the voiceovers and series title just to make them pop a little bit more. But yeah, once I was done adding sparkles everywhere, that was it for this spread. And then for the next double spread, I'm actually adding in a new planning spread this year, which is my shop planner. For the past year or two, I've just been kind of adding in extra pages between months whenever I need an extra, you know, double spread or something to plan out my shop stuff. But I wanted to keep everything concise in the same place this year. So I'm allocating a double spread right at the beginning of my bullet journal where I can plan for future projects, future launches, future products that I want to make for my shop and just have them all in the same spot, you know? 
So I just did basically the same theme and layout that I did for my YouTube planner, so it all kind of marries really nicely with each other. So yeah, I drew out the title, drew out all these squiggly waves to kind of create this border around the page, and then of course added sparkles everywhere to, you know, really, really make it look finished. Again, it's going to look pretty empty at the moment because there's nothing in it yet, but lots of space to plan lots of things, and that's what I love to see. And once that page was done, we are now going on to the last few spreads of my setup. So this spread right here is going to be my bucket list and my travel list. Since we can now travel again this year, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, knock on wood, <laughs> I decided to bring back the travel list spread or half spread, I guess, so that I can kind of make a list of all the places I'd like to go traveling to this year. Again, hopefully, fingers crossed, tap on wood and hopefully I'll get to go travel to some of them this year. I've also added a little bucket list at the top of the page. I realized that I've never really included my bucket list in any of my past bullet journals, but uh, I thought I'd include it in this one. Why not? I went back and used the little design of the sparkles trails that I did for the first keys page and just kind of brought that back in here. On the right hand side here we've got my monthly gratitude log. I did this for the first time last year and it was a really cute idea and I, it was definitely quite helpful for me in the long run. So I decided to include that one again this year. And I'm going to marry the two pages using the little sparkles trails. So they're gonna kind of make both pages seem like one, I guess. But yeah, I went back and finished the titles on my bucket list and my travel list using my acrylograph pens. And again, these are going to be quite empty until I fill them in later on. But <laughs> yeah, so far they, they will look a little bit empty. And then I went over and did the title for my monthly gratitude log. I'm kind of using the style that I used for my little quote page where I did this sort of like bubble letter with a cross hatchy drop shadow in this little baby blue. I'm using one of my Pentel sign pens in blue. So then I can use this little pink, the same pink that I used for that same spread earlier and marry the two. Again, this is what I mean. I just kind of like going back and forth using these different styles and having them all sort of marry each other it just gives me a lot more option, but it still makes things look cohesive. So then after adding tons of tons of sparkles to this page, I just filled in that left hand column on my monthly gratitude log and added in every single month. And yeah, that was pretty much it for these two pages. I can't wait to fill these out during the course of this year. And I was very happy with how it turned out and Next up, we have our last two spreads for this video. We've got my bills and subscriptions page and my first page of my January setup, which this year I'm unfortunately not going to be showing in this video because this video is already like 30 minutes long, so <laughs> I'll have to do my January setup separately. But yeah, so my bills and subscriptions is always a very helpful page where I can write down what money I'm spending every month without fail and also every year. This just makes it easy to have a set number that I have for my bills every month that is going to go out regardless. And this way it just makes my monthly expenses, spreads and trackers just a lot easier to maintain. So I went in for that craft paper from earlier and cut out these two little flag tabs with little pointy corners and I taped those onto my spread over there and so that's going to be my monthly and my yearly boxes. Thank you. 
And of course, I went in and added the title, monthly and yearly, and added a little drop shadow to these little flags coming in from the left here, as well as drawing out the actual box where I'm going to be writing in subscriptions and my bills. And as you can probably tell already from the sketch, I'm gonna be doing some little sparkle trails. I'm gonna be calling them sparkle trails. I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone, but yeah, the little sparkles that are gonna be going Ooh, swirling around the page. Again, it's quite a simple sort of spread and layout, but I like these pages to be very functional and just, you know, have more space to feel functional than going over the top with design and then not having enough space to actually use them to their full capacity. So I like to keep them quite simple and spacious for, you know, the whole year since I am gonna, these are like the whole year kind of spreads. And then finally, I am doing my January first page here. Unfortunately, as I said, I'm not gonna be showing you all of my January spreads this year, but um, this one is just to show you guys what kind of theme I went with for all of my January spreads. And of course, it is the lilac purple squiggles that I'm gonna be pretty much using a lot this year, if I'm honest, because they're very easy to make and they very easily create a full page pattern. So yeah, I'm very obsessed with doing this at the moment, if you can't tell. So I just did a little mini calendar over here of the month of January underneath my title and I'm using a mixture of my Crayola Super Tips, my Arteza Fine Liners and my Tombow Dual Brush Pens to create this entire page, all in varying shades of purple and lilac of course to kind of create a, a pretty little color story. I of course added tons of little sparkles around some of the more empty areas of the page. I also added a little border with the same Arteza pen to the little calendar because I feel like it was getting a little bit squashed there. So I just added a little outline to it. That's pretty much it for my January title page and I honestly just kind of use this pattern and these sort of design elements in the rest of my spread when I did them off camera. But yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys the rest of my January spreads on my Instagram if you'd like to go see them. They'll probably be on there on a little reel. And now I'm just going to give you guys a little flip through of all the pages we did today. I'm really happy with how all these spreads came out. I think they're a lot more colorful and a lot more, you know, happy. As much as I did love the monochromatic colors from last year, I feel like I still managed to do a bit of a monochromatic look this year, but with more color. So not just black and white. And I'm very glad with how I managed to like keep it nice and simple, but still nice and pretty and cute. But yeah, I'm very happy with my new bullet journal. I'm so super excited for this year and just having so much space in this, in this new notebook with 192 pages. So I don't have to be worrying about running out of space this year and keeping my spreads short and sweet. So yeah, that was it for all of my 2022 bullet journal spread set up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope if you followed along, let me know on my social media. Thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Do not forget to check out the link downstairs in the description. And yeah, I hope everyone has a lovely year. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.